Are uh, we... This omnibus has been sitting waiting since January for me to unbox. So this is going to be a very timely and relevant video. I think it is a Hulk one. As always from Amazon, we have this completely useless piece of paper. This is New Warriors Omnibus Volume 2. It is a sequel to New Warriors Omnibus Volume 1. And the spine's not matching irritates me, obviously. Half the contents of this omnibus were already collected in a trade paperback from a couple of years ago. With this omnibus, I am introducing a new feature. It is called... How much did I save on this by using Amazon's pre-order price guarantee? If you pre-order something on Amazon, you get it for the cheapest price it was listed for while you had it pre-ordered. And I saved £16.34. Can't even get a bluey from a prosy for that much. This collects a lot of comics. We have New Warriors, issues 27 to 53, two annuals, Knife Splashers miniseries, some crossover appearances in Excellent Force, some issues of both Knife Splasher and Black Stars solo series. And then material from a bunch of stuff. Take off the dust jacket. I am appreciating these cover art collages that they are putting underneath now. It looks less cheap than when they just print the cover underneath. Just about all of this is written by Fabio Nicieza. And the regular artist of the series at the time is Darren Richardson. That's right, the same creative team that brought us the Vid Kids are back in full force here. You should also get used to me uttering the phrase, This character is also in Thunderballs, because I am going to be saying it a lot. I mean... Even Speedy Bowls, he was in Thunderballs. That is a whole other area of discussion, though, when Speedy Bowls went emo. This first issue is an Affinity Wilds tie-in. We have some fun little vignettes set in between the pages of Affinity Wilds. We also get to see Rage's costume get consistently worse and worse. Our main story shows us Speedy Bowls fighting his double gaga. We get the introduction of Torpedo here with this omnibus and I guess the tail end of volume one. We start getting the second generation of new Warriors members. We've already seen Rage. We also have Dartboard. Spider-Man, I guess Silo Huet, although she had been around since the start really. And here we get Torpedo, I like her. Her setup is initially convoluted and involves her brother, but she does last on the team until the bitter end. And she even returns in the underrated second series. I am going to open up to you here with a statement that is going to elicit some cheers from half of you and some boos from the rest. Knife Splasher is absolute shit. I remain surprised. Knife Splasher as fans. I think this character is the biggest obstacle and the unappealing thing about New Warriors. And we have got a fucking mini-series with him here. 
It has got art by Dave Edgar Hoover. Always good to see him. It just hit me. It's been like 12 years since he died. Knife Splasher is... He's just very bad. It's not the skateboard. It's not the fact he is a Batman copy. It's not that he is in charge of the team. He is barely a character in his own right. What little he has is unoriginal and unexciting. Bagel is in this issue, and that is more exciting than Knife Splasher. And surprisingly, he has never been in a Thunderballs comic. I think what really doesn't help Knife Splasher at all is the characters he is paired with. I mean, you've seen it here with Bagel. But I mean, the other five members of the New Warriors, they all have everything Knife Splasher lacks. They have personalities, they have histories, they have interpersonal relationships with each other. Even to get into very broad basics, they have powers, they have colourful designs. They all existed before New Warriors debuted. That latter point might seem a bit unfair, but when you take into account that Knife Splasher is the new character, he is the one they felt they needed to create specifically for the New Warriors. He fails to measure up to the other five even more. When you have managed to corral five young heroes all at loose ends, and some of them have actual appeal, the new creation should be equal or greater than the characters you have scavenged from the Marvel Universe. A knife splasher comes up short in that regard. There is not really anything good about knife splasher. Him having a skateboard being the most entertaining or enjoyable aspect of the character is not a recommendation. <laughs> it's Gideon. Fucking Gideon. Fabio Nicieza really tried his darndest to make Gideon more than just a badly named, badly designed, bad Robert Liefeldman character. But he didn't manage it. But the thing about the New Warriors is, without Knife Splasher, it is an insanely appealing team. Bringing the five of them together was a stroke of genius. There are characters there who have fan bases. Blackstar and Firestar. They are probably the two biggest fan bases. But even Seagirl and Speedy Bowls and Major Victory. They had picked up fans over the years. Bringing these characters together... Bringing their fan bases together provides one united front. That is, in my opinion, one of the true bits of magic that New Warriors weaved. It wouldn't have been the same with six new characters. It needs Blackstar. It needs Firestar. It needs Seagirl. Yeah, Speedy Bals might have 10 fans at most, but that is still 10 more fans than Knife Splasher had at the start of the series. And the amount of fans of Speedy Bals only grew with New Warriors. We're back to regular issues of New Warriors now. We have the return of Force of Nature. They were in one of the first New Warriors stories. And we see a lot of the bad guys from the earlier issues return in this volume. 
Oh, Plantmaster, he was in Thunderballs. He joined the team and became a total rip-off of a DC character. I think Aqueduct was as well, formerly known as Water Wizard. I think he was on the big army at the end of New Thunderballs. Double splash page here, and as always, they look terrible in omnibuses. Just look at how much of the art that we are losing here. Great shot of the team running into action there. If anyone wonders who my favourite member of the New Warriors is, it's the one that you've got to turn sideways to look at, which I love doing. This issue I love, and... How do I say this without coming across as petty? I love that this issue tears down Christopher Clairvoyant bullshit. Yeah, it just sounds petty. We retcon the stupid pocket of ancient Rome located in the Amazon rainforest. And you have to turn this page sideways, which I love doing. The plot involves M-Plate and Magma. And it reveals that Magma is just the normal girl called Alison. This is... Really, I know that sounds hypocritical, considering how much I complain about these types of retcons when they are done to things I don't eat. But... I really cannot stand Christopher Clairvoyant's inane babble where every character has to be a fucking queen princess of a secret race. Why can't it magma just be... A fucking teenage girl with fire powers. Why does she need to come from a hidden city that is ancient Rome in the modern day? And why does she need to be the daughter of Kate Beckinsale and Red Skull Man? Fabio Nicieza provides a good enough explanation for why things seemed that way. Kate Beckinsale was mind controlling people into worshipping her. It doesn't matter anyway. The bald twat Christopher Clairvoyant, he came back to the excellent man and retconned this retcon by just saying that it didn't count. We start a big, long story arc here, a really good one, with a new villain, Blackling, this guy here, Blackling, he has black force powers. I've said in another video, this guy was in New Thunderballs. They used him to enter the black force dimension. Loads of guest appearances from other characters, like Doctor Strange. Spider-Man, who was sort of a member of the New Warriors. Fantastic Force and the Avengers. Wingman, who Fabio Nicieza tends to bring into stories. Loads of cameos from other characters who use Black Force powers. Some of them have been in Thunderballs. And there is Blackling, and you've got to turn this page sideways to read it, which I love doing. The story finishes in the 1993 annual. That was the year where the annuals introduced new characters. And New Warriors is alone in that its annual wasn't quite introducing a new character. But it was the final part of a story introducing a new character. Another page here that you've got to turn sideways to read, which I love doing. So it goes without saying that I am loving this omnibus. This issue has a bad guy in it who was introduced earlier in the torpedo issue called Ariat. And you won't believe this, but he was on Thunderballs. He was on the same lineup as Plantmaster. One of the least interesting Thunderballs characters around, though. This issue, I think, is where that trade ends. I've got it out. I might as well check. Yes, it is. 
The main thing I remember about this is that we have a meeting between Major Victory and Justice. The new Warriors character once again meets his future counterpart from the Galactical Guardians. You call that an anus? We have a Rage story after that. Former Avengers member Rage. The character that used to dress like a dopey Mexican wrestler. It's time to deal him some odd ships and kill off his granny. I am breezing through this. I front loaded the video with my beef with Knife Splasher. And now we get to my other beef. It's like a double cheeseburger at McDonald's. One of the big debates about this omnibus is the solo series. And I don't like that it is not consistent. We had Knife Splasher's miniseries before. And we have the first issue of Knife Splasher's ongoing here. And what we don't have, we will come to after another big story. It's basically a Black Star solo story. This story is set up for a Black Star solo series which follows. As you saw, Knife Splasher also had an ongoing around the same time. I don't know how, but he did. Both those books were initially written by Fabio Nicieza, and we will see issues of them collected in a few pages' time, because six issues in, they did a big crossover with New Warriors. Following that crossover, Fabio Nicieza stops writing those solo books. I feel like... Considering there is five issues of each, and you have collected Knife Splasher number one, I think you could have collected them all for completion's sake. Or Black Star 1, like they have done with Knife Splasher. At least collect the first issue, maybe. And Black Star 1 does pay off some stuff in this story. If you had the first issue, at least... You could get a sense of what is going on in his solo series. But that brings us to the other mini-series that they didn't collect in here. Major Victory had a four-issue mini-series. And it is by Fabio Nicieza. And it really should be in here. They are collecting that in a third volume. But I'm not even sure I want a third volume. Fabio Nicieza is done with the series after this one. And the main new Warriors book is written by an editor after him. And the book is edited by Tom B. Voth, Who makes it into a Spider-Man book. And led it to cancellation. I'm not sure I want it. And I didn't like that the major victory miniseries is being locked behind that when it should be here. It's Marvel's inconsistency that annoys me the most. Either collect everything like you do with some collections. Or collect the bare essentials like you do with some other collections. Seagirl joins the cast of Avatar in this one. She goes blue, dabba dee, dabba do. They were kind of twisting and contorting some of the characters by this point. We've got a crossover with Excellent Force. Child's Play. It's fun stuff. So we've got a couple of issues of Excellent Force. Also written by Fabio Nicieza. And it's during this story that we have the first appearance of Ush from Generation Next. Cannonballs' sister. Although a lot of people point to an issue of Ron Spaceman as being her first appearance. Because you see like a family gathering. But none of them are really named or have lines. This is her first 
proper appearance. After this, Ush is in the Borg Covenant crossover. And following that, she is one of the main characters in Generation Next. But really, the only main character in Generation Next is Emma Frosties. Take a look at this. Spinkter and Shatterer, they are kind of in the same scene here by themselves. And that is proof that they are Bender's bumming each other forever. Look, there is a good comic book cover. Don't think for a minute I'm missing out this one. The guy on the right here is who gans on to be Swordman in New Thunderballs. One of my favourite characters in that title. And his sister on the left here, she is also in Thunderballs. Baron Zero impales her on his sword. And that becomes some of Swordman's motivation. We are at the finish line for Fabio Nicieza's run on New Warriors now though. And I'm pretty sure all these characters were in New Thunderballs. I know at least the woman, she definitely is. She was the stripper when they went to the strip club. But I think all of this team were members of the big Thunderballs team at the end of that run. Here is that big crossover that I spoke of. I haven't actually read it, so I'm going to try and avoid spoiling it for myself. This is what they chose for the cover of this omnibus. I think it was the right choice. Although New Warriors 34, I wouldn't be against this one. But I guess it doesn't have all the characters there. They used it on the back of that other collection. This is Egyptian Phanius. And you have to turn this page to read it, which I fucking love, Dean. I like Egyptian Phanius. I think for the most part, he has been a dependable, lesser known, big baddie. Looking forward to reading this one with him in. As you can see there, we have issues of Knife Splashers ongoing. And then issues of Black Stars ongoing. All written by Fabio Nicieza. We also have the team grow in this story. We get some new members. And this cover with all the characters together, this was the variant cover available for the Omnibus. I didn't want it because the artist is an arsehole and half these characters aren't really in the Omnibus much. It took nearly 10 years but it's nice to have volume 2. And to finally have just about all of Fabio Nicieza's New Warriors in omnibus format. I think I will end by posing a question. Should I get volume 3? As I said, I don't really want it, but do you guys want to see it? I have got worse omnibuses than New Warriors volume 3. And there is something inherently nice about knowing... I have all 75 issues in our cover. But I cannot say I am enthusiastic towards or even like any of the stuff in Volume 3. It's an itch that I will leave to you to decide if I should scratch. I would like them to do at least a trade or something of that second series. It was only 10 issues. 11 with the zero issue or 15 with the zero issue and a very loosely related Wolfman and Iron Fist miniseries by the same writer. Easy little volume they could do. There's some good comics in here definitely and if you have learned anything it's that a lot of these characters are in Thunderballs and the new Thunderball series, which introduced me to so many of them. I'll give this omnibus a pleasant seven thumbs up.